flashing hand symbols with the number 14, the number of pieces that Set chopped Osiris into, and a fish on his other hand, which is the animal that ate the phallic 14th piece of Osiris, his corpse, his male organ. These are symbols that occultists directly connect to necromantic rituals that occultists like Aliester Crowley, Jack Parsons, L. Ron Hubbard, Freemasons, and evidently Hillary staffers employ during sex magic ceremonies for one purpose, to raise or to summon Osiris, Apollo, the spirit that the Bible says will be incarnate within the Antichrist. Whether it's seances in the White House from Lincoln to Reagan, maniacal rites of the elite, or even ritual-based observances sold to the public, America is truly fulfilling the ancient prophecies, leaving no stone unturned. But the great ritual of the ages that is yet to come is not only the pinnacle of high-level Freemasonry, but it is the capstone event tying together the prophecies of the end of the age from all the major religions and belief systems. It is the ritual that would ignite the resurrection of the Antichrist. How many people know that a tomb for the resurrection of Antichrist has already been prepared for his raising and it lies beneath the U.S. Capitol Dome? The United States Capitol Crypt, it's a large circular room filled with 40 neoclassical Doric columns directly beneath the United States Capitol Rotunda. As all mystic rabbis and Freemasons understand, the number 40 has great significance throughout the Torah, the Talmud, the mystery schools, because the number 40 represents transition or change, the concept of renewal, a new beginning. Rabbis say the number 40 has the power to lift the world into a new spiritual state. So consider how Noah's flood represented the end of one age and the birth of a new one, and it lasted for 40 days. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and came down with the stone tablets that set the rules for a new order. But according to Mackey's authoritative encyclopedia of Freemasonry, 40 is the number of days of mourning in Assyria, Phoenicia, and Egypt to commemorate the death and the burial of their sun god as well as the period in the festivals of the resurrection of Osiris. So consider that the U.S. Capitol Crypt was built originally to offer a secret entrance to a coffer that they call Washington's tomb that's stationed next to a repository of 13 statues of the National Statutory Hall Collection. Of course, the number 13 is not coincidental. It's sacred to Freemasons as the number of Osiris and his future resurrection. Revelation 13.3 describes the head of the beast being wounded unto death. Then the whole world marvels when the beast is healed and rises from the dead. In this mockery of the death and resurrection of Christ, I suggest that the most fitting place on earth for the Antichrist body to lie in state will be in the tomb of Washington beneath the floor of the Capitol Dome. Why? Because the rotunda of the dome is where deceased presidents, celebrated commanding officers, even celebrated private citizens, like recently the Reverend Bill Graham, lay in state beneath the magic 72 pentagrams and the apotheosis of George Washington, America's first Osiris, to be translated into the kingdom of Osiris. But until now, nobody has laid directly beneath the rotunda in the Capitol Crypt that was, according to authoritative Freemasons, prepared for America's Osiris. There is therefore no other more appropriate place for a United States president or a celebrated global leader to be placed for viewing. It was prepared and has been in waiting specifically for the magic ceremony that will give rise to the beast of Revelation. On his death, Antichrist will be placed in this magic coffer designed by Freemasons and the 33rd degree Scottish Rite members will come there to perform the raising ceremony. Through Masonic alchemy, presidential apotheosis, that is the leader of the United States, America's Pharaoh, being transformed into a god within the Capitol Dome or the womb of Isis in sight, of the obelisk of Osiris, or the Washington Monument to those who Masons call profane, the uninitiated, actually began with America's first and most revered president, 
Master Freemason George Washington. In fact, Masons in attendance at Washington's funeral in 1799 cast sprigs of acacia or evergreen to symbolize both Osiris's resurrection and Washington's imminent resurrection in the realm where Osiris presides. Now, according to this Masonic enchantment, Osiris, Horus, was rising within a new president in DC as Washington took his role as Osiris of the underworld. Now that's further simulated and uh, symbolized by the three-story design of the Capitol building. Freemasons point out how the Great Pyramid of Giza was made up of three main chambers to facilitate Pharaoh's transference to Osiris, just as the Temple of Solomon was a three-sectioned tabernacle made up of the ground floor, the middle chamber, and the Holy of Holies. The U.S. Capitol building is therefore designed with three stories, Washington's tomb, the crypt, and the rotunda, capped by a dome. Each floor has significant esoteric meaning regarding apotheosis, and the so-called tomb of Washington is empty, has been since construction. So we have to ask ourselves, why didn't they just clear this area out and use it if Washington was its intended corpse but refused to use the facility? The official narrative is that a legal issue kept the government from placing Washington's body there. However, just as the tomb of Jesus Christ was emptied before his ascension, Washington is not in his tomb because he was never meant to be. He was the forerunner, the John the Baptist sent to prepare the way for a Messiah, while he himself traveled to the home of Osiris as depicted high overhead in the dome, in the womb of Isis, in the apotheosis of George Washington. In the context of the Capitol Dome and the 72 stars that circle Washington's apotheosis in the womb of Isis, the significance of that symbolism is very, very important because in sacred literature, including the Bible, stars are symbolic of angels. And within Masonic Gnosticism, 72 is the number of the fallen angels or cosmo craters uh, reflected in the 72 conspirators that controlled Osiris's life in Egyptian myth. These are the same entities that currently administer the affairs of Earth, according to experts in the study of the Divine Council, that believe that, beginning at the Tower of Babel, the world and its inhabitants were disinherited by the sovereign God of Israel and placed under the authority of 72 angels, which became corrupt and disloyal to God. But these beings quickly became worshiped on earth as gods following Babel, and they were led by Osiris Apollo. So consistent within the traditions, the designers of the Capitol Dome, the Great Seal of the United States, and the Obelisk Washington Monument circled the apotheosis of Washington with 72 pentagrams, dedicated the obelisk 72 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, and placed 72 stones on the Great Seal's uncapped pyramid, above which the Eye of Horus, Osiris, Apollo stares. Those three sets of 72, combined with the imagery and occult numerology of the Osiris obelisk, the Isis dome and the oracular great seal are richly symbolic of the influence of Satan and his angels over the world with a prophecy toward Satan's final earthly empire, the coming Novus Ordo Seclorum or the new golden pagan age. Now, in order for the inevitable worship of Osiris to be reestablished on earth, the 72 demons that govern the nations have to be controlled and therefore they're set in magical constraints on the great seal, the Washington obelisk and the pentagram circles around the apotheosis of Washington in order to bind and force the desired effect according to the esoteric beliefs of the Freemasons and other occultists. In The Secret Destiny of America, Manly P. Hall noted as well 
that the 72 stones of the pyramid on the Great Seal correspond to the 72 arrangements of the Tetra Brahmatan, or the four-lettered name of God in Hebrew. Those four letters can be combined in 72 combinations that result in what is called the Shimhamvorish, which represents in turn the laws, the powers, the energies of nature according to the Masonic occultists. So the idea that the mystical name of God could be invoked to bind or loose these supernatural agents or the powers and energies of nature as Hall called them is very meaningful creed inside many occult tenets, including Kabbalah and Freemasonry. And that is why the 72 stars are pentagram shaped around the deified Freemason George Washington. Medieval books of magic or grimoires, such as the Key of Solomon and the Lesser Key of Solomon, not only identify the star systems, Orion, which is Osiris, and Pleiades, which is Apollo, as the home of these powers, but apply great importance to the pentagram shape of the stars for binding and loosing their influence.